Welcome from Vancouver Point Grey. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Yesterday, we asked the Attorney General why she's imposing a new wholesale beer and wine tax that's going to increase prices in BC. In response, she said she'd reduce the price of Red Racer IPA by, by just over 12%. What she didn't mention, however, is that she's cancelled the 16% wholesale discount for cold beer and wine stores. This means that, even on the Attorney General's numbers, cold beer and wine stores will be paying 4% more for this product when they stock it on April 1st. They'll also be paying 4% more for Corona. They'll be paying 6% more for Budweiser, 9% more for House Sound Rail Ale Nut Brown. These new costs will be passed directly to beer drinkers. Why is the Attorney General making beer drinkers pay more on April 1st thanks to her new beer tax? Madam Attorney. Madam Speaker, let me remind the member opposite that this is a wholesale price. Yeah. Everybody is paying the same wholesale so price. No more discounts. The, the, the wholesale price itself is set at roughly what the, the, uh, the, rather the <laughs> private liquor stores were paying all these years. They had a 16% discount. The wholesale price roughly aligns with that 16% discount. There you go. That is the scheme starting on April 1st, Madam Speaker. Everybody will pay that price. The rural agency stores, the government stores, the private stores, the wine stores. That is what a wholesale price is. Everyone pays the same price, level playing field, starting on April 1st. Vancouver Point Grey on a supplemental. Honourable Speaker, the numbers are in black and white on the LDV website and the Minister knows she cancelled the 16% discount. I don't understand why she's pretending that's not the case. But the price is going up in the government stores as well. Yesterday, yesterday when the Attorney General said she'd reduce the price of Red Racer IPA, she didn't include the government's new retail markup, a markup that she's not announcing for nine more days. The Attorney General says the new price is 12% lower than current prices, but the overhead at government stores is over 17%. That leaves 5% of overhead to be paid for by government store customers. Now, why is the Attorney General claiming she's lowering prices when Red Racer IPA and at least 5,000 other products will be more expensive as of April 1st? Madam Attorney. Speaker, this is the wholesale price we're talking about. Wholesale. It's purchased by customers who take it out and then they retail it. The private liquor stores will be retailing that product. They will set their own retail prices. That's their prerogative. The government stores will be setting their retail price. The wine stores will be setting their retail price. That's how it works. You sell a product at wholesale, people retail it. This is the change that's happening on April 1st. It's a change welcomed by industry. It's the level playing field that people have been asking for for many years, Madam Speaker, and it joins all the many other changes we've been making in the Liquor Policy Review, and they are good changes, Madam Speaker. Member for Vancouver Hastings. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Honourable Speaker, we're joined today in the legislature by several wine store owners. The Attorney General, I will tell her, will have little success convincing them that the price increases they face are someone else's fault. That's because the Minister's replacing their current discount with the single wholesale price. Those owners are projecting $40 million in losses over the next five years unless they recover those losses by increasing prices to consumers. So my question to the Attorney General, can she tell these small business owners how they can recover their losses without passing unsustainable price increases on to consumers? Madam Attorney. <laughs> Madam
Madam Speaker, in the system we had before, the government store set a retail price. They discounted it to the rural agency stores by 10%, then they changed it to 12%, but they could only go up by 10%. They discounted it to the private stores by 16%. They discounted it by, to the wine stores by 30%. That was a great system. Nobody could understand it. I bet none of you could understand that. Through the chat. Madam, sorry, Through Madam Speaker. I'm Through you, Madam Speaker. You. What we have done, Madam Speaker, is change the whole system so it is a single wholesale price that purchasers, that, that retailers will be paying. They will then go out and set their own prices what the market will bear in their local stores, in their local neighbourhoods. This is the level playing field, Madam Speaker, that we are embarking upon on April 1st. Thank you, Mr. Hastings, on a supplemental. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. And Honourable Speaker, what the government is doing is they're adopting a single wholesale price that was never part of the review, that was done at the cabinet table after that as a separate item. And I would say to this, the minister here, you can go ask those wine store owners, you can ask people in restaurants, you can ask the industry whether they like the system they have today better than the one you're proposing, and they will say yes, honorable speaker. These people have said this was done with no consultation, no meaningful consultation at all. Zero. Zero. On the wholesale price, zero consultation. So, members, Honourable Speaker, members Honourable come Speaker, to order. in a half-hearted effort to offset this elimination of this discount, the Minister has told these business owners, the wine store owners, that they can sell other liquor products. But there's a catch, of course. They'll have to relocate their stores because most of them are within a kilometer of existing cold beer and wine stores. So my question to the minister is this. Why is the minister throwing 12 small businesses with over 200 employees under the bus by telling them they either become a private liquor store or they go out of business? Madam Attorney. Speaker, there have been, of course, extensive consultations which carry on every single day. Uh, but let me just, the, the, the member opposite, Madam Speaker, mentioned the industry. So there's an industry representative, a, a representative group that I think people here are all familiar with, the Alliance of Beverage Licensees. Their, re their representative was on the radio today. He said some of them are going to go up a few pennies, some are going to go down a few pennies, some, some are going to move a dollar or two, but it's far too soon to be alarmist. Oh. In other words, this system is just fine, Madam Speaker. But Madam Speaker, look at the other things that we're doing on April 1st. Members. Members. I got your quote when you were opposed to the discount for Madam Speaker, yeah. we are changing so many things on the 1st of April that suit the consumers that make our whole liquor system, the liquor distribution system and the system for consumers in British Columbia a better system altogether. This is out of the Liquor Policy Review, which, may I remind members, was the most subscribed, the most interested by, by the public review that we have ever done in British Columbia is resulting in a new system and it's good for British Columbia. Mm -hmm. 